the Buddhist interpretation of consciousness is slightly different from what we have at the present in mainstream and neuroscience, because consciousness is not produced by the brain as such. It has a correlation. We say that consciousness is not matter, right? We have the world of matter, but we also have a world of consciousness. So consciousness is a different kind of aspect of a phenomena that is not considered as matter, although it has a correlation with brain and with brain function. And yeah, some scientists of the past also have indicated, even Penrose, for example, also indicated that the brain actually facilitates consciousness rather than causes consciousness to come about. There's one aspect. And in Buddhism, I think, if you look at the correlation between brain and consciousness, it can be two-way traffic. The brain can produce states of consciousness, and consciousness can produce, as we know in neuroplasticity, consciousness can change the brain. So if in the research of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, especially that done by Jeffrey Swartz, for example, you come to similar conclusions that if you train your mind, you can train your brain, right? But if you don't train your mind, then there's a possibility that the brain actually tells you what to do. So in that way, there's a correlation between a physical brain and what we actually call consciousness within the Buddhist context. It's not physical, it's not matter, although it has a correlation with matter. So we can measure the correlation or the interaction, so to say, but consciousness itself is still quite of a question mark in modern science.